were the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. I was like three or four times she said it. No, no, she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more from the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Get it things in mind, something wicked, no alibi <laughs> Good Tuesday morning. Welcome back to LTL True Crime. I want to welcome in everybody here on this somewhat beautiful Tuesday morning. I can't believe they're saying that we may be getting a storm here, a snowstorm on Thursday here in the New England area. It is. It's uh, the April Fool's Day storm. I remember that was many, many years ago, but it blasted us. And I hope it's not going to be another one. I hope the weather will shift. And the warming trend will continue here in New England because I am done. I'm over it. I don't want snow anymore. I want spring weather. I want summer. And then, of course, my favorite season, fall. So uh, let's get to spring first because it's really not feeling like spring around here. How is it feeling around near your area? Are you, are you feeling like it's spring? Uh, let me know in the comments because it's I, I can't believe it. I'm done. I'm over it. I'm over all this weather. But uh, listen, I want to uh, welcome everybody in again. Uh, if you have not been to my channel before, my name is Brian, this is LTL True Crime, and we discuss a multitude of cases here on this platform. Um, not only true crime, we get into uh, conspiracy and fraud and, and all that fun stuff too. Uh, feel free to chat in the live chat here on YouTube to the right-hand side of the screen. We have great uh, subscribers, members, and moderators, 
and uh, we're going to have some, I wouldn't say like fun, but we're going to have some interesting topics to talk about today. Uh, what I did this morning, I woke up very, very early this morning. Uh, as you all know, I've been working on creating my own module studio. I just moved into my space uh, officially on yesterday, um, but we had the key a little bit early. We, my girlfriend and I brought some uh, furniture over the other day and just scouted out the space and got some ideas. Uh, last night, we actually went and picked out a color for the room. So that's very exciting. We're moving in that direction of getting it painted. Uh, I'm supposed to have a friend of mine that owns a contracting business go in uh, hopefully tomorrow if he has time to actually paint the space. And then we're going to start moving furniture in and going through the assembly and getting all the beautiful audio and digital equipment that I got uh, put together. And um, it's going to be a really exciting uh, time. It really is. So it's going to be a little bit of a build out. We want to make sure that the space is perfect before we go live and everything is up and working correctly. I have a little bit of learning curve with the new equipment. So it's going to take me a little bit of time. So uh, stay tuned for all that. Oh, and also I want to let you know, I'm going to be doing behind the scenes footage when we are building out the space. And I plan on doing my first behind the scenes today, actually. I'm going to go in there and shoot some video for members only. If you want to watch me building the studio out, all you got to do is go down there. And if you're not a member, this content is going to be for members only. If you want to join as a member, just go down below, click that join button, and that will get you a membership. And my membership start at a buck ninety nine. A buck ninety nine will get you uh, that behind the scenes content, and uh, I think it's going to be enjoyable for all of you. Believe me, it's been it's been a little stressful so far, but we're going to get through it, and we're going to do it. And the studio is going to be beautiful. And the great thing about it is I'm going to be able to have live guests come into the studio. That's why I wanted to do this. I wanted to get out. As much as I'd love for people to come hang out in my bedroom, they're not going to hang out in my bedroom. They're not coming to my home. So we're going to get the studio up and running. And uh, I am super excited about it. Just ecstatic about it. I can't wait. And I just hope everything goes as planned because sometimes it does throw a little bit of a curveball, but we'll make it happen. That's one thing that I always do is I make it happen. All right, my friends. That is my opening monologue, my intro. Let's get into the primary of this live today. So this morning I woke up early and clicked on YouTube and I had this fantastic video that came up and I said, wow, this is awesome. I think people are going to really enjoy this. And it's from, it's a video from uh, a YouTube channel called Hawk Law Group. And they posted this video three days ago and they talk about the Karen Reed case. And the thing that I love about it is that they break it down in layman's terms, the the, the most basic run of this, uh, this case. And I love the actual insight that these lawyers and a former police officer give uh, their perspective to what they feel about uh, what's going on in Karen Reed's case. So we're going to listen to Chance, Sean, and Reed today. And they have a podcast called the Layman's Law School Podcast. And I believe their firm is out of Georgia, if I remember correctly. Again, it's a new channel. Uh, they only have about 700 subscribers. I've put their link down in the description. What I would love for you all to do, let's get them to 1,000 subscribers. So after this, uh, after my live, if you guys can go over there and just subscribe and let them know, hey, LTL True Crime sent us over here. Uh, and I want to give them full credit for the video because they give a very in, introspective uh, pers perspective to uh, the Karen Reed case. So without further ado, let's pull up that video. And I will say this, a couple of key points that I was listening to this morning when I was reviewing it in my notes, I love what the former police officer says about the police officers that uh, investigated this, this investigation, uh, this murder case. And I also love what they have to say about the FBI getting involved with this investigation. So note that in your notes or make a mental note, and we'll pull this up and go through it. Uh, here we go. So what I did is they had a little bit of an intro. Uh, they just talked about what they were drinking. I've kind of skipped through that. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this podcast. It's only about 30 minutes, and uh, it's very short. It will keep the attention span, and I think you're all going to love it. All right, here we go. The bite of the bun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some things are too smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah too I'm smooth. getting. I like a little chat. rough edge. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting rubber yeah, hose. I like, I like uh, my uh, women a little on the trashy side. You know, mm. you know, gotta get 
So that was my uh, karaoke song to my wife. So, <laughs> so Reed, tell us about this. <laughs> tell us about this case, State of yeah, Massachusetts it's, versus it's, Karen Reed. It's a very, it's an interesting case, and and you know, if I was going to give every detail, we'd be here for eight hours. But essentially, to break it down, um, Karen Reed was dating uh, Officer O'Keefe, and they were out one night, and Officer o O'Keefe ran into a fellow officer named Brian Albert. And Brian Albert invited them to a party at his house. Well, Karen Reed didn't really want to go. Uh, she and Officer O'Keefe went to the party. Uh, oh, Karen Reed dropped Officer O'Keefe off. Re, uh, she saw him. She stated her membership. Thank you. I appreciate that. But Thank she testified that she saw him walk inside. She left, uh, went home, went to sleep. And this was late at, you know, this was a late night party. This is the after party. Yeah, this is the after party. After the party is the after, after party. party. Exactly. Mm. So you're talking, I don't know the exact time. Let's call it midnight-ish, one o'clock-ish. Well, she goes home. She goes uh, goes to sleep. Karen Reed does. And when she wakes up, her boyfriend's not there. They were, they lived together, and she wasn't there. So the, she goes back to I'm going to tell you one thing that I really love about this. They, pers they, they analyze this in a very um, open-minded way. You know, they're not just set one side. But I'm going to tell you, I get that they lean in Karen's direction because they say that there's a lot of things wrong with this investigation. I'm going to tell you, and it's coming up soon. I love what the former police officer has to say about the Canton police being involved in this investigation. And I think you're going to agree. All right, let's keep playing. First, the last place you saw him uh, to Officer Brian Albert's house. And when she pulls up, he is laid out in the snowy uh, entryway. The snowbank. The snowbank of the house. Um, basically where she had dropped him off. Um, even though her testimony said that he went inside the house, it was essentially where she dropped him off. And he was dead. So she calls 911. Um, one of the people that was there when the EMTs and the officers got there, said that the witness said that when Karen Reed, when they talked to Karen Reed, she was saying, um, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. And then that's kind of controversial to come back into play because there's some testimony also that says it was kind of like uh, my cousin Vinny mm -hmm. in the fact that she was actually saying like, did, I hit did, him. Yeah. Did I hit him? Did I, I hit shoplifted him? from that, the yeah. sack well, of she was, you know, the, And she even explained that she was saying, like, did I hit him? Like, she's like, oh, crap. Did I did I do this? Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they the state of Massachusetts charged her with second degree murder. Um, and then the local police came in and and did their investigation. And it looked like she hit him with the car. Um, well, and, and that was and, it. And talk about, you know, uh, some evidence that they supposedly found at the scene that that supported the fact sure. that she had hit him. Yeah, and that's that's the key. So that's ba that's the basic rundown of what the events are when the trial is essentially starting and the prosecution. That is their and and like I said, there's other timeline of events about Karen Reed's vehicle and where it was and driving and all this other stuff. But there was fragments of Karen Reed's vehicle, mainly the back tail light that had been busted, that were on top of the snow. Hmm. Uh, and when they when the officers came to investigate the problem with that is the defense team had gone and found video of her that morning leaving to go check to find out where her boyfriend was officer o'keefe and she had grazed i'm going to tell you one thing that i absolutely love about this podcast already what do they keep saying what do they keep putting in front of john's name officer officer police officer officer that is so much respect and i absolutely love that i absolutely love that and hit uh kind of like a pole when she's leaving her home and it busted her tail light and you can see it on the video so she was still a little little probably little, little groggy maybe absolutely. from the night before absolutely i'm sure she did something illegal but it was probably driving under the influence uh, but <laughs> mundane yeah. compared to murder so that later was found so how did that breaking of the tail light oh, yeah. at her house how did those that piece of evidence wind up on top of the snow where mr o'keefe was and so all the investigators that came to the house and mr o'keefe's house i'm sorry and um uh, mr albert's house uh 
were all had all these ties to, you know, Officer Brian Albert. Um, and so more and more stuff has come up. And the first thing, Sean, just on that scenario, as a police, as a former police officer, former investigator, let's say that you come and, you know, me and you are buddies and you come to my house and I have a dead person in my yard. What are you supposed to do? I mean, do you, do you hand that off? Well, what I'm going to do is go, I'm going to run because <laughs> I don't want to be involved uh, with, with you and a dead body whatsoever, but uh, it's kind of a thing uh, that, that depends on the situation and the severity okay. of it. Right. Uh, if I'm a police officer and uh, your son's bicycle is stolen and that happens to be assigned to me, uh, I'm not going to have any problem doing anything I can to find your bicycle. Sure. It's just not a big issue. If I find it, great. Sure. If the person gets arrested, great. Who cares? Right. Um, when it comes to a very, very serious case like uh, a, a murder or, you know, a rape, sexual assault, something like that, you know, the, the consequences go up and the appearance of impropriety or or the likelihood or possibility of, of impropriety and somebody acting inappropriately is... Uh, you know, it's going to be under much more scrutiny. So even yeah. if I came to your house and did a 100% comprehensive thorough investigation that was uh, buttoned up, you know, why would I do that when the defense could say, well, this is, you know, Reed's best friend doing right. this. Of right. course, well, I was well, friend. Let's, let's, let's well, lower those terms. Know, I mean, yeah, I, mean, I have to work with it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it it would be much easier you know, should, you know, anytime that another officer from an agency that you work with is involved in anything, and we did it, you know, when I worked. I guess that's my question. Do you, if you walk in there, do you say, you know, like we're an officer of the court. If we go in and we have a conflict, we say, look, judge, we can't do this case. Blah, blah. Do what, you do what, that in an event? All right. Before we get to that answer, I'm going to put a poll here up in the chat. Uh, let's see. All right, let's see. Do you think that this case should have been ha uh, handed off to another agency? Give me your poll opinion, yes or no, yes or no. All right, let's hear the answer here. Investigation as well. In something that serious, what we would do is we would probably secure this crime scene to keep anybody from going in and going out. To Which was not done in this case. Taking right. evidence, leaving additional evidence, and calling a, a different agency, gotcha. you know, to, to work it. I mean, we mm. did it as far Interesting. as, you know, if I'm in my patrol car or my, you know, unmarked, you know, investigator vehicle, and I backed into a car at the Walmart parking lot, we're calling the Georgia State Patrol in to uh, work different agencies. Accident, so it's not, you know, just yeah. so that, you know, there's no, uh, no impropriety right. or, or, or the, it, the view of it. Exactly. Yeah. It's just, we're going to let another agency do that. Uh, the only th time we changed that when I was uh, at the sheriff's office was with officer involved uh, shootings and things. And there's been a lot of controversy about that, but I still think it was the good issue or the good way to go is right. that we would have an incident that involved an officer's use of force, whether it was a shooting or something. And we would call the Georgia B Bureau of Investigation in and put no jody i think the general point is this i think the general point is what they're making if you have a relationship with the house that you're going to and you're the lead investigator okay uh just make sure my microphone is on sorry i had to peek over if you're if you're the lead investigator and you have a relationship a friendship with that person okay and there's a dead person on your lawn just like he said i don't want anything to do with it i'll go secure this the, the the scene but I'm going to turn this over to someone that's going to be completely neutral, completely biased in this situation, because you want the most accurate investigation possible. N nothing like this. No, no uh, framing, no conspiracy, nothing. No questions at all. If I'm a police officer uh, and I have a friend, John, that's a police officer, and I have a relationship with him and I've been... Uh, uh, you know, known him for 10 years, been to barbecues, traveled with him, you know, whatever it may be, okay, weddings, parties, whatever. And someone dead ends up on his front lawn. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be pretty concerned at the sense of how did this happen? 
What the fuck is going on? And I probably would say, I don't want anything to do with this. You're my friend, but I need to stand back and let someone else take this case. You know, that's that's just my personal opinion. I wouldn't get involved. I wouldn't get involved. I mean, just wouldn't do it. That officer on administrative leave um, or, you know, on desk duty. And I just don't understand that no one went there and went, uh, what's going on here? <laughs> Why are we not talking to anybody? It's it's odd and it's strange. And I think that is the biggest part of it. We know the relationships between the investigators and the police in that house. That is going to be a huge sticking point for the defense in front of a jury. The, def uh, the defense is going to get out there and say, look, look at all these relationships that all of these people had inside that house with the investigators, with the police officers that came here, with the people that came to secure this crime scene. And no one's talking. There was no one that went to a door and knocked on a door and say, hey, can we come in? Can we look around? Uh, can we can we dust for fingerprint? You know, whatever it may be. Can we secure the scene? That did not happen. That is the first huge mistake that happened in this case, in my opinion. And I think the defense is going to eat that up when you get in front of a jury. See, we have time to sit here and speculate and think all this over. But a jury, when they're picked, yeah, they may have heard about the case, but they haven't sat hours and hours and hours and hours like we have. You get that in front of a jury, they're going to look at that and say, well, why? Why is no one talking? Why wasn't this performed? Why wasn't this standard police procedure uh, done? There's something wrong here. Something doesn't seem right. Something seems something seems like a cover up. So I guess that's the point that I'm getting to, and I think these three gentlemen are getting to as well too. All right, let's keep playing on. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation team would take months sure. to do their yeah. investigation, yeah. and and basically give a green light or a red light of whether or not the officer's actions were appropriate. And in Columbia County, they did a, a use of force investigation team that was comprised of just a few investigators that had, um, you know, some seniority and, and were good investigators so that we could rapidly stop everything that we were doing, mm -hmm. investigate that case and <clears throat> release the officer back to normal duty, turn everything over to the district attorney's office. But that just, you know, shows you <clears> the standard of the agency that I was working at yep. was, you know, uh, in my opinion, top of the line, uh, the sheriff there, trust everybody that worked for him. If he didn't, you didn't work there. Um, so we were, I'm going to tell you another thing that I love about this video. And I just remembered this podcast is that I, I love what the fact, what they say about uh, the judge, the judge in this case, Auntie Bev. I love what they say about that. And you'll hear that here in a little while. All right, let's keep playing through. I hope you're enjoying this so far. If you're enjoying it so far, give me a one in the chat. If you think this is kind of like, eh, throw a two up in the chat. All right, let's keep playing. You know, basically to speed up the process, um, comprehensively investigate everything, but be able to, you know, give the green light or red light to the, this was a justified use of force. This officer can go right back to work or, you know, sorry, this isn't a justified right. use of force. And we're, no matter what, we're turning over our results yeah. to the district attorney's no, office. I mean, in that case, you, I mean, you, you always have to, in our, in our situation too, as lawyers, you have to err on the side of caution. And if you think it might be close, you err on the side of, Hey, I might, I might need to stay out of here. And so, Karen Reed's defense has a lot of things and now there's circumstantial evidence and all this, but th there's a couple of big things that came out. The, one of their things that they're saying is that their theory is that O'Keefe, uh, Karen uh, Reed drove off. O'Keefe went inside the home and then he was attacked by the family dog mauling his arm. This uh, is the defense's theory, right? Yeah. And he was nearly beaten to death. Um, the Alberts then dragged O'Keefe's body outside to the snowbank. They staged an accident. Um, then this is not disputed. Albert's sister-in-law Googled, I believe at 2.30 in the morning, how long does it take for somebody or how long does it take a body to die in the cold? Mere coincidence. <laughs> Mere, Mere coincidence. coincidence. Just, you put them all together. This is her defense. It's just a coincidence that that happened, right? I love these lawyers. Absolutely love them. Um, 
like I said, I've already talked about the tailgate that was already busted, and they have security cameras showing her where it was busted and how did that evidence come back mm-hmm. to the scene, which is very strange. Um, the the detective, his name is Michael Proctor. He was put in charge of the investigation, but he had a very personal relationship with the Alberts. Um, there was some issues of of there was a some kind of bar fight back in the day that was talked about. He covered it up, this mm-hmm. kind of thing. They they babysit each other's kids. They, you know, they're 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 friends. They're mm-hmm. they're associates. They're they work together and they're friends. And none of this stuff is in dispute. Um, another th- thing is that the snowplow operator, they finally tracked him down. The snowplow op- operator was going through the town um 30 minutes to an hour after Miss Reed had dropped Mr. O'Keefe off. And he testified that there was nothing out there. There wasn't a body out there. There was no one out there. But what makes that interesting is that when all the officers that were involved in the case and in the investigation, they, the defense's uh, argument is they purposefully misled uh, the defense team and who was actually doing the operating of the snowplow. They gave him a different company, said it was subcontracted out. Misspelled and, the name. Mis- all the witnesses. Something. There was four witnesses. <laughs> they mm-hmm. misspelled all four witnesses. Um, so that it just reeks of this kind of yeah. conspiracy theory sure. kind of thing. And what really happened is when it came to a full head is the FBI came in. The FBI did their analysis and it took a while. Let's hear what they have to say about the FBI getting involved. And one of the crucial pieces so far is the FBI comes in and they say um, their accident reconstructionist says the injuries on Mr. O'Keefe do not match in any way, shape or form or would cause death in, in regard to how the prosecution is saying, meaning they're saying the FBI is saying there's no way that this Mr. O'Keefe died, even if she did hit him, because there was injuries in other areas and the and the way he died was not um you know congruent Blunt. with yeah. with with that theory. Well, and that just to just to know that the FBI is involved, it's kind of like one of those things when, you know, if you smell smoke, there's probably fire somewhere. You can't just call up the F- an excellent point about the FBI. We have said this all along. I've said this multiple times on my live. The FBI is not getting involved if they don't have something. I mean, we just saw what happened to Diddy. I've been covering that case as well. I got to get back on that. So much more stuff has come out in the Diddy case, but they're not kicking doors in. They're not talking to a bunch of people they're not looking over documents you know it video whatever they need to do if they don't think that something majorly is going on all right let's keep playing on fbi and get them involved in an investigation you have to have some pretty uh substantial allegations and some pretty good uh at least you know evidence or something that alludes to what you think is evidence to convince them to even prosecute it um, or to even investigate it, excuse me, not prosecute it. So just for how them did, to get involved is, in the first place, yeah, there that, had to be some that work, Sean. So if you're, cause I'm, I'm you know, obviously less familiar with the criminal side. Um, you know, you, you hear FBI coming in, how, do, how does that process of even getting them involved work? Well, the, you know, the federal agencies have a very narrow thing that they can investigate and that's based on the you know states being sovereign states having their own government or a you know a united nation of states but uh, a lot of times it has to do with there being uh interstate commerce involved anything that traveled to and from outside of a, a state but anytime that you have public corruption involved right uh Obviously, you don't want to call the Canton police chief <laughs> to investigate the public corruption of his Canton police officers. Yeah. Uh, so that's when, you know, you can get the FBI involved if you have, you know, some some significant allegations or evidence um, that, you know, they just don't, you know, just because a, an officer was rude to you, you can't call the FBI and them get involved. In right. It. But when you have some serious allegations about a police cover up or, you know, especially when it involves a murder. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, if you've got some significant evidence that this may have occurred, uh, you know, they're going to jump on it. So go ahead. Chuck. Yeah. So I was just going to say one of the interesting things to me, and I think this goes back to law school, you know, you wonder why they're putting you through all this analytical reasoning 
uh, logic games mm-hmm. test. So it's like A plus B equals C, right? Type testing. And and you're kind of seeing here with what the defense team is doing, how that actually plays out in a case like that and the value of it. So first of all, it's like, all right, are, uh, is there a close family relationship? You know, the people know each other very well, the, the people whose house the person's body was found at. The you know, to, yeah, yep. to the people that are investigating. Yep. You know, might that skew them towards, uh, you know, not investigating them? Yes. Okay. Are there things that don't match up? Did they get a bunch of things wrong in the investigation? Are they trying to mislead people? Oh, and this one was just interesting to me was that there was a tail light found or the piece of the tail light was found on the snowbank at the scene, sitting on top of the snowbank on yeah. right on top of the snowbank when it had snowed all night. Yep. And a snow plow had went through. Right. If y'all have ever seen the snow plow, it, kicks it was up. angled to push the snow out. But Sean, you got you, you're what born in Wyoming, right? Montana. Montana. Yeah. I'm sorry. So you you have, you're well versed in in at least a snow plow. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, in most of the places they use snow plows on the highways in Montana, sure. but everywhere else you just drive on the snow. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just... yeah sure. But I mean, it, it it just follows that. Either one of two things happened, right? right? You know, mm. if, if that happened at the time he was hit and he died from exposure and it snowed all night, then then he should have snow on him. OK, uh, all the items around him should have snow and accumulation on on top of on top of them. And there in the, you know, perfect for everybody to find is a pristine on top of the snow piece of the tail light, which, you know, of the person who they're trying to pin this whole thing on. So, uh, like you said, where there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah, I think these lawyers, uh, uh, from from the get go, picked out uh, that as a as a, a significant piece of evidence that maybe these lifelong friends of this police officer are are, are you know doing some favors. And I think there were some phone calls too that were yeah, there were. And, but one thing, I'm- again, I'm gonna pa- I'm just gonna pause real quick. Uh, if you're just coming in, we are watching a. Uh, podcast from Hawk Law Group. I believe they're out of Georgia. This came up in my algorithm this morning. The channel only has like 700 subscribers. I think they're just getting going, but they do a podcast. Uh, it's called the Layman's Law School Podcast. The thing I love about it is it's very easy. It's very basic to break down and they're not using huge lawyer terminology. Hell, I'm not a lawyer. I'm sure most of the people that watch these lives are not Uh, a lawyer. And we look for this, you know, listen, I don't want to say this at an expense of anybody, but it is uh, entertaining. It's very entertaining to listen to because it's easy to follow. Uh, And I I listened to this actually on the way to the gym and back from the gym this morning. It's like, I got to do this live. It's great. And if you all can go over after, and I'll drop the link to their YouTube channel, let's get them up to a thousand. I would love to see them get to a thousand subscribers. Let them know LTL True Crime sent you over there, uh, and it's the Hawk Law Group, and I will have the link down in the description, and I will also drop it at the end of the show, and I hope that they don't mind that I am bringing this to my audience and doing a review and reaction to this, uh, because I would love for their channel to get a whole bunch of subscribers in their channel to blow up, and I think you guys got to continue doing this case. We want to hear what lawyers' perspectives are on this case, either if you're with Karen Reed or against Karen Reed. We want to hear the lawyer perspective. All right, let's keep playing through this. We got about another 15 minutes or so. I appreciate everybody being here today. Please make sure to smash the like it button and it will get this stream into that evil YouTube algorithm. All right, here we go. I want to get to <clears> before <throat> that and I'll get I'll ask y'all that in just a second. But one of the things that I've kind of grew up with, my dad being a district attorney for you, so Jay-Z. long, I don't do Jay-Z. criminal Thanks work. Coming I in. would always Thank hear you. him complain about other district attorneys and the way that they approached a grand jury. And so in this case, the grand jury only heard the first part of the story I told Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. y'all, and they didn't hear any of the other evidence. And I'm not saying, because in the grand jury, you don't get, only the prosecutor gets to present. present. And so if you just tell somebody that a woman came, dropped her boyfriend off, he was there the next morning, and she showed up to the accident and said, I did it, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. Of course, they're going to stamp it yes at the grand Mm -hmm. jury but what's frustrating to me is that there this information about um the phone records Mm -hmm. the searches all these things that in my opinion needs to be given to the grand jury Mm -hmm. now like my dad would always present in his mind is his case but he would always present Mm -hmm. at least what he thought the defense's case would be Mm -hmm. and said listen if you still believe this is a case that you should indict 
then do it. Mm -hmm. The problem I have with the way that the district attorney in Massachusetts is acting is if you don't present any of that, then every case is going to be true billed by the grand jury. Mm -hmm. And because of that, a lot of innocent people are going to go to jail because Miss Reed evidently had enough money to pay a good lawyer because this is hard work mm -hmm. and to find all this oh, information yeah. out. Right. So th that's frustrating to me. Sure. What are y'all's opinion on that with the grand jury and, and especially in, and what the district attorney should or should not present? Well, I just want to go back because I, I want to, we're throwing around terms, true bill, grand jury. What is the role of, uh, Sean, of a grand jury in a situation like this? I mean, they, are are they deciding if the person's guilty or what are they what are they actually deciding? What is that process no, like? The, the grand jury process is really, you know, a, a, a matter of due process, but it, it's kind of an antiquated system in mm -hmm. my mind mm -hmm. now, uh, mm -hmm. just because what we uh, just said is that it, it doesn't have to be the prosecutor. Who, yeah, the prosecutor, you know, can I'm just going to answer this real quick because I don't know if you're seeing it on Twitter. And thank you for joining us on Twitter. Uh, I'm a uh, proud boy. Uh, I, I, if you need to reach me, uh, you can reach me here at Let's Talk Live podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, send over an email, whatever you need to do. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's keep playing through. We'll just present the favorable evidence they rubber stamp. to the prosecution. Yeah, uh, for the prosecution, and the what, and the jury actually grand jury decides if there's enough evidence to indict the person. Is correct. That right? It's a, a person is arrested. Uh, a lot of times, you know, that's based on a standard of probable cause that mm -hmm. you know the average normal reasonable person based on the facts and circumstances would come to the conclusion that you might have. Just want to recognize this, Jay Z. Thank you for becoming a rookie detective. Uh, a member of the channel, and thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Uh, you're going to get access to all my members only content. And I don't know, you said you're new here in the channel. Uh, I'm actually getting, I'm building as of right now, a, a working studio that's going to allow me to have live guests in. Uh, and you're going to be able to be, take part of that journey by being a member. I'm actually going to go to the studio space today and do uh, a little shooting in there and upload a members only uh, video. And I'm going to continue to do that through this build process. So all uh, my members will will see what's going on behind the scenes, and that's going to be a perk for becoming a member. If you want to become a member and you're not, just go down below, click that join button. You can join a monthly membership. My memberships only start at a buck ninety nine, and uh, you can support the ch channel in any way that you want. Uh, but to get exclusive access to that content, you have to join and be a member. And then once the studio is finally built. We're going to have the first official live in there, and I think it's going to be a beautiful presentation. So uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. All right, let's play on. We got about another 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Committed, committed to this the crime, offense. so you're arrested. Then it, you know, a lot of times people have a preliminary hearing where the same thing is presented to another judge, you, uh, you know, or it could be the same. You know, from judge. Australia, uh, and that Australia. judge makes a determination then. Uh, whether or not there was probable cause at the time the warrant was issued. Mm -hmm. uh, but for uh, felony cases, mm -hmm. most felony cases in Georgia and a lot of other states, you have a right to a grand jury indictment. Mm -hmm. uh, that is where the citizens mm -hmm. uh, that form the grand jury for mm -hmm. that jurisdiction review the case mm -hmm. uh, to ensure that there's probable cause for the case and that there is sufficient evidence to move forward with the prosecution of the case. Right. Um, I can second, you know, what, what Reed said about his father is that, you know, he was a, he had a lot of integrity as a district attorney. Oh, he's, he's a terrible human. Don't, don't, don't listen. Yeah. No, no, no. no. He, as, he, as far as from a criminal defense side, yeah. if you got to Reed's father prior to a. James, thank you for becoming a member, a rookie detective. I appreciate that. You're going to be able to join the journey of me building out the new studio. I will be over there shooting today. Most likely I'll have the video edited and edited and uploaded this afternoon. Uh, if not, definitely tomorrow, you'll have some content there. So uh, let's see, Parker says, uh, nice work out there, LTL and 13 Jor. Appreciate you all. Parker, thank you for the nice comment. I appreciate that, thank you. And if you wanna join a membership, you can go down there and click that link that my beautiful girlfriend has, uh, Casey has popped in the chat. Uh, you can become a member by clicking that link and joining membership. And I'll see you in a little while, I promise. Uh, all right, let's keep playing through. <laughs> the case being indicted mm -hmm. and said, I know you have A, B, and C, but, you need to leave but it look in. at D, yeah. E, and F. Mm -hmm. And provided him that information, documentation, witness statements, he would present all of that to the grand jury. Mm -hmm. I have other cases where yeah. I've done that exact same thing. Uh, 
cases that are still pending now yeah. uh, that we, I mean, I can't really talk about, but sure. where we have given information right. after information, after witness statement, uh, along with, you know, certified letter to the district attorney. I know you're presenting this, please present, present this, this as well mm -hmm. so that they can have a fair, well-rounded, uh, you know, knowledge of what the facts and evidence in this case are. Mm. And then in this mm -hmm. particular case, you get the grand jury, uh, which is a very specialized case because normally grand jury proceedings are secret. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, but in this very specialized case, mm. the law allows you to get the transcript of the grand jury proceedings. So in that transcript, do you think that any of the information right. that I provided mm -hmm. was presented? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. zero. Yeah. And, and that it's bothers me. Yeah, it was it an really important it's an important process because part of the process, the grand jury process, is designed to actually eliminate unwarranted prosecution right. of Needless people. Cases. For, yeah. And yeah. It, and it basically, I mean, it costs a ton of money ton. just to have fifty, you know, you know, forty people show up to get picked for a jury for a case, mm -hmm. let alone paying all of the court costs, the the judge the bailiffs, the whole system, like paying for that. And if you have a bunch of cases that are completely frivolous, ridiculous, shouldn't be in there, right? You're just going to slow down the whole system. People get very frustrated with how long the justice system takes. And it's in part because sometimes cases like this uh, get and this through. this is eating up a ton. And, and and another part about the grand jury that's that's aggravating, and it's our system in, in totality, is that it's this win versus loss thing. And, you know, we're all Thank you, Magnolia. Uh, competitive. Have a good day. Uh, we're lawyers. that You have to be. But it's not it's the end game for the district attorney's office doesn't need Thank to you. be Resting. a win Thank it you. needs to be what's right and what's correct justice, justice. exactly and 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 kind of hide, hiding is the wrong word um but not giving the full information to a grand jury and, and as much as i hate to admit it right now you're guilty until proven innocent so mm -hmm. you can be something that might mm -hmm. and probably should be struck down by the grand mm -hmm. jury is not and mm -hmm. now you have a case now it's in the news now your whole life's ruined mm -hmm. and you sure. should not have even gotten to that part and we've kind of in my opinion in a society just done it we, we you might as well not even have a grand jury if you're not all right we're going to do this here just want to recognize uh timmons thank you so much for becoming a rookie detective you'll be able to join along the journey of me building out my new studio i'm going to be going over there today to shoot some footage it's kind of it's a blank canvas right now but at least you guys will get a uh, feeling for the building and we're going to progress and keep shooting uh video for you all all the members will keep doing those behind the scenes and thank you for the support i appreciate that I love all the new faces over here i love the fact that the channel is growing and you're all enjoying the channel uh, i not only cover the karen reed case if you're new here on the channel Go to my homepage. I have tons of other cases that I do and tons of other cases that I've been doing. If you're into the Idaho 4 case, I've had probably over 300 lives on that. Um, I've followed missing persons cases. I've followed uh, fraud and corruption and embezzlement cases. Uh, and we do a wide variety of content here. It's not just solely true crime. And I think uh, LTL is going to grow way beyond uh, its possibilities. But I can't do it with all of uh, without all of you, the subscribers, members and supporters. And I do uh, super, super appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to upping the game uh, of LTL and getting into LTL studios and being able to do some very impressive lives from there. So thank you. All right, let's play on. On, on, on. Not going to present a fair and equal argument, mm -hmm. then you just might as well say, skip it. And that's what's frustrating in this case, because I would have to believe if you actually present the true evidence and you don't have to say anything about, you know, you don't have to ham it up. Just, just, just the facts. I don't see a, a grand jury allowing this case to go forward. Mm. If they got all the evidence, right? Absolutely, mm. and, and that's the thing. Is that a lot of see in this day and age, I, I <clears throat> used the term antiquated, you know, earlier, as the grand jury is not necessarily, you know, like it's supposed to be a checks and balance. Mm -hmm. you know, yep. they see that, you know, prosecutors, elected officials want the grand jury because it's open. someone that they can get in front of. Uh, and you know this is part of their election cycle you know that they sure. are the most you know uh, educated person in the room explain to the grand jury how criminal process goes and what i do and these are the cases we prosecute um but as far as you know they also use it 
so that they can have cases kicked or no build, which mm -hmm. means an indictment was not given right. when the prosecutor doesn't, doesn't want to make the mm -hmm. difficult decision. Right. Mm -hmm. Like when, you know, there's a, a heated incident that involves law enforcement or uh, involves, a, you know, a, 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 you know, possibly a minority group or something like that, where there's really no evidence that a criminal action took place. Mm -hmm. The instead of the prosecutor doing his, you know, absolute job mm -hmm. as a uh, you know, a neutral, yeah. uh, and saying, sorry, that I'm not going to pursue a case whatsoever that mm -hmm. I don't believe that I could prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a, because it's in a, a political, uh, position, yeah. they can go into the grand jury and just like they can slant a case towards mm -hmm. favorable. Yeah. They can only present evidence to the grand jury about this is the allegation, but 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 but, yeah, sure. but yeah. right. if y'all want to indict it, right. you can. The grand no wipe here because they had to pin it on someone else. They had to pin it on an innocent woman that left her boyfriend at that scene. Officer John O'Keefe. Officer John O'Keefe walked into that house, and they needed to pin it on someone. The McAlberts needed to pin it on someone. So why not the person that left? And we'll, we'll uh, for what happened inside that house, John O'Keefe was killed and dragged outside and left on that lawn to die. And they needed someone, they needed a scapegoat. They needed to pin this on someone to deter all the attention away from that house. And they knew the relationships of the people that were going to investigate this. They knew they could try to slither their way out of this. But what has happened? What has happened? We had a, an awesome journalist dig back the layers, peel back the onion layers, and expose everything for the truth of what it is in this case. And even the FBI is now saying that Karen Reed's SUV, the injuries to Officer John O'Keefe, is not consistent with injuries that would be sustained from Karen Reed's SUV. The FBI is saying that. I don't know how much clearer we need to make it for the deniers in this case. It's clear. The picture is becoming crystal. We know what happened. And a lot of people that were in that house that night or involved in this case have a lot of answering to do. Sunshine, thank you for becoming a member of the channel. I appreciate the support. All right, let's get back to the three gents here. See what they have to say, and they're going to wrap this up in a minute. Grand jury you know, indicted them, not it's, me. It's totally up to you. Yeah. And then when the grand jury no bills it, that elected official has uh, some coverage. Know, I presented the comprehensive yeah. investigation to them and and mm -hmm. they said it wasn't enough yeah. and if i missed aiden's name which i probably did aiden carney turtle boy i don't know if i got that into my little rant there uh but if it was not for turtle boy peeling back the onion layers and exposing this case for what it is and causing the viral sensation that has gotten us all involved in this case uh we would not be here today karen reed would be in a very different position believe me if she didn't have jackson Yane and little her attorneys behind her karen reed would probably be in jail right now. if no one was if all eyes weren't on this case here in massachusetts and now it's national and becoming worldwide news if those eyes were not on this case karen reed would probably be sitting in jail for life right now for the rest of her life and that would be a very uh injustice to justice to her her rights would be violated she would be an innocent woman behind bars and that's not just that's not just yeah. and, and some of that goes like you said uh, it's a political thing where you have um the elected official being may, maybe the district attorney in this situation where he is trying to get something true build um to really help it's 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 and the ju the judge and the district attorney are going to err on the side of guilty. 
<laughs> to put it easily, sure. because they don't want if some if this person got out and did something else, then the public's going to say, well, he should have she in this case should have been locked mm -hmm. up, blah mm -hmm. blah blah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, but it's got it to me, it's gotten too far. The pendulum has swung. Um, yeah, and keep this in mind, and you know, I want to pull this up too, Sean. And um, Sean says uh, they wouldn't have upgraded the charges if she didn't fight back. Yes, yeah, she fought back. They thought that she was going to cower. They didn't think that she was going to stand up on the st on the courtroom steps and stand up stand up for herself. Karen Reed's a very strong woman, um, and you know if you're all new to this case, you got to you got to think about this too. The prosecution's theory of what happened has changed three times. The prosecution has changed the charges in this case, I believe, twice or even though maybe three times in this case so far. Why? Because nothing is sticking to their theory. Nothing's sticking to what they say are facts in this case, because every time their facts are put out, it's debunked, it's debunked. And now you have the FBI saying that this is all not true. And I also wanna make sure and make note of this as well too. And they talked about it earlier in the podcast about Jen McCabe, Jen McCabe Googling Hoss Long or how long to die in cold at 2.27 AM. The FBI has also confirmed that. What a coincidence, like they said, it's so coincidence that this just all happened around this. The FBI has confirmed that. To me, if I'm a juror and I'm on the jury and I'm impartial, I would look at that and say, hmm, I don't know. Something is majorly wrong here. Why would she be doing that? I'd probably say Jen McCabe has some answering to do for herself. And when you say too far, that's exactly what I think about. Obviously, we don't know every single detail sure. of this case, every bit of information that that prosecutor had. Very early on in a case, when you are the prosecutor and you present it to the district attorney's office with the evidence that you have, uh, it very well may be, you know, this case looks like a slam dunk to me. Right. It gets true build. Yeah. The case moves forward. But now we're talking <clears throat> about a case that is scheduled for trial April the 16th mm. of this year, 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And the prosecutor has been given all this information. There's it's been still court hearings about it and everything. And they are just, you know, adamant that yep. this is a, a smoke screen. Slammed that, up. That all these arguments that are being made, it's like, yeah. do you not stop and pause and say, <laughs> mm -hmm. something screwed that, up it's here? That, it's that mm -hmm. win-loss mentality too much well. where you're into it. You know, they're, they're trying to win. But I also wanted to ask y'all before we run out of time, the last thing that I thought was very interesting that's come out recently, and there's going to be more and more. This thing's ongoing. Um, so Brian Albert, like we said, the Albert's house is where mm -hmm. Mr. O'Keefe was, was yeah. found in the front yard. And Mr. Albert's uh, sister had asked or, or asked, had Googled how long does it take die for somebody cold. to die in the cold. We talked about that. So, also that night at 222, there was a call from Brian Albert yep. to Brian Higgins. Higgins. And Brian Higgins is another officer uh, investigating it. And that call didn't it, it either wasn't answered or um, it was declined. But then 17 seconds later, Brian Higgins called Brian Albert back. And that call lasted for 22 seconds. And both of those people have said that that call didn't exist until the FBI got involved and showed them the call records and showed them that if it went to voicemail, that it would have shown that it went to voicemail. Merely, here's, a, merely an here, invitation to the after party. Yeah, yes, right. here, this is already, this is after, <laughs> yeah. After, after the Mr. after party. Uh, O'Keefe has essentially been hit by Miss Reed, as far as the prosecution claims. This is after that. Um, and both Mr. Albert and Mr. Higgins claim that those were both butt dials. Mm -hmm. And so the attorney uh, for Mr. Miss Reed <laughs> had a, he was very serious, but obviously the, the, the uh, room erupted a little bit, but he's basically said, I've never seen a case that had so many butt dials. He said, your honor, um, Mr. Albert's butt was in the bed. His phone was on the table. I agree. The you two mean. could have never met. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was a I good butt line. dial and a reverse, reverse butt, butt dial. dial. Yeah. Reverse butt dial. And so, and, and he, and then, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Brian Albert admitted that on the call back, his phone has either, you have to do uh, facial recognition yep. or a passcode. Uh, it was not answered by. I said it was ass recognition. Remember? Uh, ass face recognition. I think they had ass face recognition. A voicemail. So mm -hmm. something, his butt something had answered, to answer it. answer it. And then and last then put in the 17 passcode? seconds. And put in the passcode? Then, yeah. yeah. So, 
that um, those kind of things that it, that the FBI brings are are you know huge. And in this case, it's um, it just makes you wonder. At least it makes me wonder how many cases mm. out there in in our country um, that a good attorney or a capable attorney were, wasn't put on, and this wasn't found out. Because this is, in my opinion, is a clear you know, sham job. I mean, they, uh, these people Something that investigate, it, and bad. it stinks bad. And these people need to be, these people meaning need the to officers be investigated, need yeah. to be investigated yeah. and they need to be arrested. Yeah. Like this is, mm. this is, I mean, you're trying oh. to essentially destroy, well, not, you've already killed mm. one person and you're trying to kill the other person uh, figuratively. Well, I mean, and just like I'm, I'm going, going back to my earlier example, like, you mentioned the the bar fight that was supposedly covered up, right? And, there, it's, and like it's, said, there's tons no, of but, history. But, but I'm saying that you know, that part. Yeah. I'm a police officer. I'm friends with Reed or Chase. You know, Chase loves his MMA. That's right. Chase gets in a little bar fight. I show up and I'm like, Chase, head get out, out head out the back door. Yeah. I'll get the, this done. But if he killed a man, it's totally. It's a different <laughs> it's a story. story. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it's like. Chase, get in the car, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Uh, yeah. You're going to have to wait here until yeah. somebody else gets here. You know, yeah. but it's just yeah, a matter I, of uh, severity and, and you know, obviously uh, discretion was not used. Uh, and any time, anytime, um, you know, I think everybody needs to have a little grace in their life and, and we all make mistakes and I understand that. But anytime you try to pin that on an innocent person, mm. you're the devil. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's Absolutely. just, that's just, well, you know, purely read Sanders' opinion, but you know, you, you, you know, that's never happened to me. No one's ever, I never killed anybody, got no, whatever. But I, I will say it was a little embarrassing. I didn't understand what body count meant in a conversation recently, and I was shocked to find out someone saying seven and someone saying it's like, well, I've only zero, killed, yeah, I've only killed two. <laughs> what are you talking about? You no, I'm just yeah, 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 yeah. no, I'm just joking. Just joking, but I'm I'm interested to see. I think what you're going to see, gonna be a fun, it's yeah, going to be fun it's, in, in uh, you're going to see some good, yes. yeah, good legal work yes. involved in this case with the lawyers that are involved. And it's ongoing uh, from, right now, uh, so y'all right. listen, check it out. It's on Court TV. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's a fun case. And that, I will also urge, you know, watch all those wonderful creators out there that have been following this case as well too. You know, I'm doing here on LTL. I'd love you to follow my channel, but I think really the one that needs the most attention. Uh, and the most credit to, you know, pull, you know, pulling back all those onion layers. And I always say pulling back the curtain, the Wizard of Oz, you know, don't look at the man behind the curtain is Turtle Boy. I mean, he broke this open and he constantly continues to break things open. And, uh, you know, we're very, very thankful for him and what he's done for Karen. Uh, if you're not subscribed over to Turtle Boy's channel, make sure to go over and subscribe to his channel. Uh, he really is the one that has really blown this wine open. Uh, and I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm, I think it's awesome. I've gotten the opportunity to spend time with them a couple of times. I've had them on the show uh, a couple of times as well. You can go over and check out my lives with TV. And, uh, it's one of the, 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 one of the first people I want to get into my, uh, studio once the studio is up and running. Um, and I think that would be a great live as well too. And I want to someday, hopefully get Melanie over here because we've, uh, you know, we've created a, a friendship and, and through this whole YouTube experience. So it's been really great. All right, let's finish this up. I got to get out of here. I got about a million freaking things I have to do today. And um, I appreciate every single person that's joined us, about 500 people in the chat today. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please make sure to subscribe uh, to the channel. I appreciate it. All right, let's go. Uh, it's interesting. very interesting in the, in the regards of the... Mm -hmm different entities involved and their responsibility involved. And I think it's going to, this case, Ms. Reed's case, I think is going to be decided relatively quickly, but this case is going to go on for a long time. Oh, sure. I have a very solid bet that mm -hmm. this will be right. a Netflix documentary within the year. Right. Uh, this is a, this within is a the year, one. within the year, well, within it, the end, 2024. It, it, okay. Well, you, are you willing to put something on that? I got, how about a cold plunge? Will, will you do a cold plunge? I'll put you? a million Shibu Ibu. Is that how you say it? Sean? <laughs> Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu. Uh, <laughs> shares. Token, yeah. One million shares. Uh, <laughs> so 75 cents. <laughs> it is interesting that, that we're going to see some rulings relatively quickly on this. Yeah. One. Cause there, by there's the time, motions. By the time y'all are watching this podcast, yeah. 
uh, there's going to be well, rulings coming that, out. John, there's a the defense. Well, how the, you can do that um, where you don't have to wait to the end of trial. There's there's multiple motions hearings that are pending. Uh, there's motions that they have filed to get additional uh, subpoenas for phone records of these other officers that were involved so that they can see what's going on. Uh, because this is stuff that they're just getting relatively late well, in a trial. So let's say, but let's say, I mean, it, this is a jury trial. How do you make that not a jury trial and the judge to say it's over as a defense? I mean, you file a motion to, um, there's, there's motion to dismiss. There's it's like, not really a motion okay. to dismiss in, in criminal sure. court, but you can beat a prosecutor down so much that mm -hmm. the judge gotcha. can give them the indication that they ought to dismiss it. Yeah. Right. I don't know what the hell y'all are so doing, like in, but y'all need in to dismiss. civil work, our work. Correct. You can, a, that, because that's a legal, uh, you know, it's usually a legal standard that here's the facts and here's the legal standard and they have not met the legal standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what we're talking about here is a legal standard and two different sets of facts yeah. type yeah. thing. And that's usually the case in criminal cases, but they filed a motion to disqualify the prosecutor. Um, similar to mm -hmm. the, you know, Donald Trump thing that's right. going on here Georgia. in Georgia. I know they're investigating the Because DA they're saying too. this is yeah. not a neutral prosecutor. Right? <laughs> right, She's right. moving forward without in the face of all at this, least yeah. pausing. Yes. Not saying that she needs to dismiss the case immediately, but at least pausing to investigate. And she's saying, no, we're trying this case April 16th. Right. There's something wrong. She has an agenda, you know, so there's going to be a lot of stuff in the news about this case. Uh, relatively soon yeah i wouldn't be surprised if the case was postponed past april 16th you know because otherwise this uh miss reed you know is is going to be denied her constitutional right to a fair very right you know an impartial speech and, 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 I, and i would i'd be very surprised if, if after her case is over that there are not more there's going to be some federal charges on someone I can I, absolutely you can just see it so yeah it'll be an interesting case to follow and i think it's, it's a it's a pretty Good one to kind of check back in, um, and hopefully we can bring that if there's some kind of resolution and give our take on on uh, the ending of this thing. Yeah, and I might owe you some Shiba Inu at the end of it. I Who think knows? you will. Who I knows? think you will. All right, well, that'll do it for the uh, for us this time. Uh, hopefully you learned something today. Follow this case. It's an interesting case, and uh, we will be following up this uh, story within future episodes. And so... Uh, if you enjoyed today, please uh, like, follow, and subscribe, and you'll get notifications about upcoming episodes. Thank y'all. All right, I'm going to uh, pop that up. So I just dropped the link up there above in the chat. Please go over and subscribe to Hawk Law Group's channel. I'd love to get them to 1,000 subscribers. Let, you know, drop a comment on the video. Say, hey, LTL did a reaction uh, on your video this morning, and let them know I sent you all over there to subscribe. Uh, it was a really great podcast. I think it was easy to follow uh, for new people if they just came into the Karen Reed case. I think it gave um, a lot of different perspective. And I think, uh, you know, we're getting kind of the feeling from all of them. They think this whole thing is a bunch of bullshit. I mean, look, they're even confirming and saying, just like we've been saying all along, the FBI is involved and they confirmed two of the key points, in my opinion, in this case. One, uh, the, the injuries that are consistent with Officer John O'Keefe did not happen by Karen Reed's SUV, nor could it ever. And we know that Jen McCabe Googled uh, at 227, Haas Long to die in cold. And, and just what, you know, with all this going on, why would that have happened? So uh, a, lot of, a lot of things going on. And of course, uh, you know, we know the truth. We know the truth. Um, we, we definitely know the truth. So if you're new here again, please make sure to subscribe, comment down below, give this a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. I do uh, have to head out here, but I want to give a little bit of content. I will be back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you just wait until this live is over, it'll take you over into the next live. Just click, click play and you can set your reminder. Uh, again, if you enjoy the show, come watch me tomorrow night at 8 p.m. I appreciate it. And I'm going to head over to the space here in a little while do some members only content for all the members, uh, cut that video together and upload it. And uh, hopefully you'll all enjoy the build out process as we go along. All right, everybody have an amazing day. I'm glad that I could give some morning content to you all. And I will be back again. I'm Brian. This is LTL True Crime. I'll see you all soon. Everybody have a fantastic day. Bye. Yeah. It's your true crime. Where the secrets lie
Just yeah, ending two months of the week, you know I'll abide. Just get your pride. Unravel in the web of evil. No stone left unturned. We dive into the crime. Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime. LTL true crime, unveiling dark realities of the true crime. Unravel in the web of evil. No stone left unturned. We dive into the crime. Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime. LTL true crime, unveiling dark realities of the